All right, we are live this week on the pod. Christy, what's up? How's it going? Hey, nothing much is up. Um, it is the last month of 2020, so we'll see what surprises it brings. Yeah, right. What's left in 2020 <laughs> to bring? <laughs> it's like, please, right? no, nothing else. Can we just get to 2021 already? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Murder Hornets, Revolution, who knows? Oh, yeah, some yeah. good things. There you go. Cool. And we've also got uh, Brad on the podcast this week uh, as our guest. We get uh, to have three people on the podcast this week, which is always a treat. Um, Brad, tell people how to pronounce your last name, and then also some of the uh, stuff you do with WordPress. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, so, yeah, my last name is Tunar, uh, but a lot of people say Tusnard because uh, it has a D at the end. It's silent, so it usually trips people up pretty good. Um, so my company is Delicious Brains Inc., uh, and we do uh, several WordPress plugins, uh, WP Migrate DB Pro, WP Offload Media, WP Offload SES, Better Search Replace Pro, and we also have a SaaS app called Spin Up WP, which is our new shiny product that we are putting a lot of effort into at the moment. Yep. So folks are pretty familiar, at least in the WordPress space, with uh, your company, Delicious Brains. Uh, and yeah, I'm also very familiar because... I remember reading your blog post about how you uh, did your, your rebranding for all your plugins. And I was like, oh, that company looks pretty cool. And then here, a couple of years later, we've done our rebrand for WP Buffs and went with the, the same guys. And they did a great job for us as well. So, Yeah, your site's looking great, man. It's uh, the branding that uh, Tim and uh, his partner at Dose Media did. Uh, they just did an amazing job on you guys' stuff. And I'm, I'm, super, I'm still pumped about our branding, to be honest, that they did years ago. Uh, so yeah, they, they're, they're really good. Yeah. I remember we read through your blog post on the podcast. It was oh, intense. Yeah. Yeah. We've had like, since then, like that first round of brand rebranding went really well. It was like, it was easy. Like it, it was just, but then when we were doing the branding for, uh, WP offload SES, um, <laughs> they like Tim and his partner, they came up with this pigeon concept. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but like a pigeon is not the most majestic bird in the, in the bird kingdom. We're not talking and, an eagle uh, or a falcon. No, we're talking about a pigeon. Yeah, yeah, exa <laughs> exactly. We're talking about a flying rat <laughs> is what we're talking about. <laughs> And so we were like, we were so against it right out from the outset. We even said like in the initial uh, brief, like that we didn't want a pigeon, even though we knew that like carrier pigeons and messaging are very, you know, closely linked and, and it would make <laughs> for a good thing. We were just like, we don't want a pigeon. And then the first, like one of the first things they came back with was a pigeon. And we were just like anti-pigeon. But, but then we went through a bunch of other things. We went through like a St. Bernard dog thing that did work. And there was just a bunch of other things. And it was just this lengthy, exhaustive process. And, and I think Tim and, and his partner were just getting really uh, bummed and <laughs> like exhausted <laughs> by us. And then eventually we just capitulated at the end and we really started to embrace the pigeon and the, <laughs> the, the branding that they, they had done for us. And so now, you know, we have a pigeon. We've got a pigeon in our, in our branding. <laughs> and this is for WB Migrate DB Pro, right? No, no, no. That's, uh, that's, that's the uh, migrating geese, which are uh, uh, more uh, I knew more majestic. That's more why I was... I was trying to yeah that and that's another reason we quoted why we didn't want another bird because it was going to be confusing um but but no i we we really like the pigeon now the the pigeon that they came up with looks really slick uh like the brand and so we're, we're we love it so it's yeah it, we came around on it even though we were determined for it not to be a pigeon. <laughs> I think that's one thing that like, I would definitely rely on that team at Dose for is like, they can go from like a concept that sounds like, hmm, I don't know about that. And they can take it to like, <laughs> yeah. whoa, this is actually really cool. Um, and they have the design yeah, chops yeah. and honestly, like the kind of like the creative chops, I think to like, 
help you take that step and help us take that step. We were totally like lost. So they totally let us on yeah. pretty much how to move yeah, forward with everything. Yeah, I think the next time we do branding, like we're going to just go in with a completely open mind and not like put any kind of kibosh on any ideas out of the gate. At the same time, even if we had done that, I definitely would have been opening that pitch deck with like, don't be a pigeon, don't be a pigeon, <laughs> don't be a pigeon in my mind. Uh, so sometimes you just go in with preconceived notions, right? You just can't, you can't help it. <laughs> Yep, totally, man. Um, cool. We talked a little bit before we got started here. Uh, we were just chatting offline and talking about some of the stuff you're working on this year, you personally. Uh, and it sounds like you're pretty active in the hiring process for, I don't know, a few different positions, just like that's what you're spending a lot of time on right now. Um, how's that going? How's 2020 been for you? Not great. <laughs> it, kind of, it kind of fits with everything else that's been going on in 2020. Um, and I, I, I think that actually the, the pandemic has actually maybe thrown us a curveball in hiring as well, because one of our biggest differentiators before the pandemic was that we were a remote company, right? That, we, that you could work from home. And all of a sudden, that is no longer a differentiation. Like, everyone's working from home, everyone's remote. I mean, I mean, shouldn't say everyone, because obviously there's people out there doing difficult work during this pandemic, but like everyone in IT pretty much, right? Except for the people at the data centers that have to keep the servers running, everyone else is kind of, you know, good to work from home. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I think that's been a big challenge. So our Typical uh, process involves posting a job to weworkremotely.com and we just get tons of applicants from there and we, you know, just pick from them. And this year we've gotten way less applicants because there's way more uh, companies hiring on that job board. Interesting. So, your so application, total applications went down a lot this year. Hmm. Yeah, way down, way down. Like we used to get close to 300 applicants for, for jobs, for developer jobs we would post on there. And we're getting like 20 to 30 now. What? That's like, a huge yeah. change. Oh, that's it's, like it's incredible. It's, and I'm surprised, I, it's staggering. <laughs> I'm surprised because, you know, at least in the U.S., um, we're hearing a lot about just our astronomical unemployment rate because of the pandemic. Right. And granted, that is mostly across non IT, but I've still heard service of plenty workers, of yeah. people. Right. Exactly. It's a lot of service work. Um, but even then, I've heard of plenty of people in IT who have lost their jobs. You know, some some companies revenues or at least client pipeline has gone down. So I'm, I'm shocked. What? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the thing is, is there's an imbalance there, though. Like most people in IT haven't been affected, but most companies have stopped working in offices, right? Like not most, all IT companies have stopped working in offices. So I think there's a huge disparity there, right? So you've got way more companies competing for job, for, for job postings that are not local anymore. And, and you've got, you know, just, you know, a handful, like a, relatively speaking, of people who have lost their jobs that were kind of linked to the service sector or something, right? Um, so yeah, I, I am staggered too. I, I feel like there might be another part of this story that I'm missing. I keep double guessing myself, like, like <laughs> second guessing myself, like wh what, you know, did we change something? <laughs> you know, is our job postings repelling people now? Like what is going on? Yeah, it's um, funny because I, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're competing against a lot of other companies right now. So maybe not as easy for individual companies who are remote to hire anymore, but definitely a good time for the remote job boards. I'm sure we working remotely is, oh. is having an up year, right? They have a ton of people posting on, oh, we got to find more remote remote workers. Um, Brad, do you think this yeah. is, do you feel like this is a temporary thing? Or do you feel like people, I don't know, are starting to like, I mean, everyone's working remotely this year. So I'm sure a lot of people are like, this pandemic sucked, sucks. Yeah. But working remotely, I could see that myself doing this. Maybe I want to do this more. Do you think that you're going to probably have, you know, ongoing challenges competing with more 
remote companies, you know, in 2021 and moving forward? Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I don't think, I think a lot of companies are not going back to offices, especially in IT where a lot of the workers are uh, introverts anyway, right? Now, if you're an extrovert and you thrive off of, you get energy from other people and you're sitting in an office by yourself at home, that's going to be a problem long-term, right? It's going to be difficult. And so I, I feel like there's certainly some companies like an agency, for example, right? An agency with like client services people like that thrive off that. Like, I don't think they're going to be able to. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I mean, it's probably true, mm. honestly. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, right? Like I'm a pretty extroverted person. Um, and so a lot of the nature of work from home is a sacrifice to me but the sacrifice is still totally worth the benefit right like mm -hmm. i just have to work really hard to fill that other part of like what i need to be happy and thriving um so i think even then um we're going to see those people you know be like working from home is great you know <laughs> have you taken a personality test though do you know that you rank as extrovert you do? i have taken a personality test and okay. um, the shocking thing is that um, depending on how I'm feeling that day, I get introverted or extroverted. So, <laughs> so, so I'm right in the middle. I'm right in the middle, right? Um, so, so I right. may not be like the super extrovert. So I definitely know people who are extremely extroverted, right? Who coordinate everything and love to, you know, put events together and stuff like that. And I can definitely see those folks really struggling in a fully remote remote environment. Yeah, I had my whole team take a, a I can't remember. they're not it wasn't Myers Briggs, I don't think it was like some variation or something. Anyway, I don't think one person in my team ranked as extrovert. <laughs> Wow. And that set of, uh, we're 12, 13 people, right? So <laughs> uh, it's not surprising that, especially the way we hire, like we hire, uh, we try not to do video interviews till the very end and we don't use that as a decision. Like, so we don't, like the, the video interview at the end, it's really just a meet and greet just for fun. We've mm -hmm. already made a decision by that point, one way or another. Um, uh, and the reason for that is a bunch of, there's a bunch of reasons for that, but the primary reason is that we don't do a lot of video calls as a team, right? We primarily, like we do one, once a week video calls for updates and we don't really need to do that. We just do it because we want to get some FaceTime in so that mm. we don't turn into complete social idiots. <laughs> right? yeah. So just to, and to clarify for your hiring process, so you only do one video meet with the person you're hiring and at that point you've already decided if you're going to hire them or not and the rest is written right. communication emails or slack right. or something yeah that's most of the yep. job anyway right exactly exactly yeah. writing writing clearly and concisely is like a big ranking factor for us right and yeah, yeah. so so yeah that we we actually have been doing uh text-based chat uh interviews over google docs <laughs> so so the interesting thing with google docs is that you can actually see them every letter they type you can see as they type it whereas you know typically with like a slack chat or you know something like that you, mm. you know they hit and they have to hit enter after they've typed mm. their whole message and then you see it all but you can see their thought process and they're like backspacing and everything uh -huh. as part of the the, the chat when you use Google Docs to do the interview. And so it's, it's a little, you know, it's a little nerve wracking, I think, for, <laughs> for the, uh, the candidates. Uh, but we haven't had, you know, any serious complaints about it. And I, I, I feel like we glean a lot. We know, mm -hmm. we really get the cadence of their thought processes and, and just how quickly they type. And there's a bunch of information that comes from doing it that way. Um, so yeah, we found that pretty effective That's way of cool. doing things. Did it's, you, did you think really, of that? It's really yourself? bizarre, but did your team come up with that or is that something you, I, I think else. I came up with that idea myself uh, as part when I was developing a hiring process. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool idea. I mean, I, I like that a lot. I think there's, <clears throat> there's like a, I, I like the idea of not doing a lot of video 
through the interview process, especially if your job is based on written communication. It also is a nice mm -hmm. way to like take pressure off of people who may be more of introverts and maybe not as much of video people and want to showcase mm -hmm. their skills in a different way. Exactly. Also, that being exactly. said, there's, there's always going to be some kind of pressure in a job interview. I mean, it's like it's a job interview, so it's like it can't be right. no pressure. And there probably should be some mm -hmm. pressure because like working a job to get some kind of results has some kind of pressure, too. Right. So it's like having mm -hmm. the but the Google Doc sounds like a nice, happy medium because it's like you mm -hmm. can write and someone can you know be there hanging out with you and chatting with you but you get to glean a little bit into that process. And I totally get like the backspacing or the speed of typing or the, and looking into people's thought process. I bet you see people like, oh, I really liked that he or she deleted that little part and rewrote it because I think that how they rewrote it was better. Like that gleaning right. those little things are like totally. a lot of times can be helpful. Is this right candidate or not? Yeah, totally. I may yeah. steal. What do you, what do you so do? <laughs> do you guys, yeah. Do you do uh, interviews over video early on or? Yeah. I can talk about Caldera because Liquid Web has a very traditional hiring process, right? But we used to mm -hmm. do um, mm. a Slack interview. We'd bring them on as guests and they would have a time and things like that. But um, we would do a Slack interview, right? Because mm. again, we're testing for your skills about what you're actually going to do here, not your interviewing skills, right? So mm -hmm. <clears throat> we're going to be talking over Slack a whole lot more than we're ever going to be talking on video, right? So that was how we started, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, the rest of it was pretty traditional. Um, but we started with a Slack interview because, you know, that's, that's the basic skill, right? Almost anything else, um, depending on the role, of course, but almost anything else we can teach you when it comes to tooling and um that's the one thing i can't teach you or at least don't have the resources mm -hmm. to you know which is like can you effectively communicate asynchronously in short messages and i don't know I, i'm kind of curious and i want to come back to this thought right but i'm really curious about what both of you think about how the current moment presents an opportunity to teach people stuff you know, to bring on the people who maybe aren't currently IT workers, but could reasonably switch now that we're going to be focused more on mm. online work from home and things like that. So I'm kind of curious. Yeah, mm. I think that's, that's super challenging. I've actually had, I've had a couple WordPress friends reach out to me like, hey, I have a friend or someone I know who's looking for a job. They're working, looking to get into a tech job or technology mm -hmm. job or WordPress mm -hmm. job. And they have like been the manager of a clothing store for three years. And I've had reservations about potentially hiring those people. And I think my reservations stem mm -hmm. from having to do a ton of teaching and education and that's a big mm -hmm. commitment. I just, I don't know if we have the systems built out to like, I, we can teach people how to like do basics of, of most things, but around like the WordPress community, how does the WordPress community work? Like how does WordPress work? How does open source software work? Like there's a lot of like, that takes a lot of experience. I think it took me a lot of time to like figure that stuff out and to bring someone who has, who's like, what's WordPress or like WordPress with a lowercase P, you know, it's like, okay, there's a lot to, there's a lot to dig into here. So I've been hesitant actually to, to hire people from outside of kind of at least some experience in, in working in a technology coming or working, working in, in here. But Brad, I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are there too. Yeah. Yeah. My, my biggest reservation there would just be digital communication. I mean, I see this on a, daily basis, like with the other people, non it people that I interact with is they're just they're, they they can't even do email, right? You know, they're replying all saying thanks and like, <laughs> just breaking all the rules of like digital etiquette, digital right? Etiquette, yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, man, like this would be so painful to try onboard someone like this and mm -hmm. have to just train them up on basic things like r how to email properly yeah. you know i think i'm not saying that when someone like posts a new post and doesn't reply to the <laughs> other post about the same topic like don't start a new post reply to that and like right. and that's even another level of 
Yeah. Right, right. But I mean, they wouldn't even potentially they would have a hard time even getting their head around Slack, right? If they're having a hard time with email, right? And the etiquette mm. there. So like everything would be new to them or like a lot would be new to them at a basic level. Yeah. And I think that would be very difficult for a small company to absorb someone and have to train them up at that very basic level. I could see larger organizations being able to do that and having the processes in place to handle that because larger organizations tend to take on more junior people anyway as part of their whole growth strategy and hiring strategy. Right. For us, like we don't even take on intermediate and junior people because we feel like we would be w spending so much of our resources, the little resources that we have, just training those people up and getting them to a point where they're going to be a, a valuable member of the team. And then they might leave, right, is the other thing. And and we've only got, you know, 13 people. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like you need to be a much bigger company to take on someone with the basics. Like, I would say, like, mm. at least 50 people you would have to be. I, yeah. That's kind of the number I have in my head anyway. Yeah, I feel like I'd want, like, an academy or, like, a, train, like a, a training section of my company right it's like you see a bunch of big fortune 500 companies like doing a ton of technology education for youth like around the world a lot of that is to they want to be a good company and maybe make the world a better place but it's mm -hmm. there's also the advantage of hey in 10 years that person could be an employee here because we helped bring them up exactly. right there's that thought process so yeah christy i'd be interested to hear it like at liquid web like you said you have a more traditional approach do you well, or have you this year, you may not be super privy to all the hiring stuff, but have you seen folks come into Liquid Web who have like not had traditional backgrounds or is it mostly people who have like had some experience? It, it goes either way. Um, with Liquid mm. Web in particular, I mean, we're a thousand person company. So you don't know every single person you, you know, hire? I, you don't know. I don't know every single <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the thing is like, I, I probably know more people than like the average part of that 1000 person company. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that just has to do with my role and my personality, Extroverted, um, yeah. but <laughs> in the middle, right in the middle. Um, <laughs> but it depends, right? Like, I think that even a company like liquid web, isn't going to hire someone with absolutely zero tech skills. Right. Um, and I also think that today in particular, there really like aren't that many people with zero tech skills. I mean, there's a lot of people with zero tech skills, but a lot of the technology skills that you need to come in with are now things that more of us are practicing, right? Um, just for daily life, um, especially now that we're living in this like weird topsy-turvy post-apocalyptic pandemic world. A lot of people have had to learn how to communicate online, have had to learn how to use Zoom, right? Have had mm -hmm. to learn how to write. So I think the tides are changing a little tiny bit, right? And um, I don't want to be discouraging to anybody in that position. Um, for the most part, though, Liquid Web is like traditional and it's hiring. And so part of that means that you don't see a whole lot of sort of like career switchers, right? Like you see roles being posted and people with experience coming in. Um, some of the roles are deliberately posted as entry level roles, right? Um, mm -hmm. And the company is still looking for um, the relevant credentials for an entry level role, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so so with Liquid Web, it's um, more in the traditional end. Um, I definitely agree with you both that for a small company, the amount of resources that training requires is massive and training is a skill, right? I don't think that yeah. everyone who is a CEO or an owner or a technology lead is necessarily going to be the best teacher. And that alone brings on a level of complexity that is not going to be easily approachable to most small companies. The other thing too, is it's not the best thing for the entry level person, right? You mentioned that they might leave, but it's really hard to start out in a position in which you don't have mentorship and you don't have a lead in whatever you're trying to do to learn from and grow from, right? And I think that that can also be a disadvantage, but 
is that disadvantage heavier than the disadvantage of getting your foot in the door? I don't really know. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I think I mean, I also this kind of transitions into something else that Brad you put as uh, you know maybe a potential topic we could talk about today, which is like when you're rating potential candidates for a position there's like this intuition versus scorecard i don't know conversation hmm. some people may do more of a formal scorecard we used to do pretty formal scorecards around like what we thought about answers to certain questions was this a seven out of ten answer this seemed like a seven out of ten answer actually i remember we didn't we specifically didn't do seven out of ten we weren't allowed to give seven out of tens because seven out of 10 is like a total waffle answer. Like it's like not good and not bad, but it's just in the middle. So we're like either six or eight or any other number out of 10 besides seven. But anyway, <laughs> no sevens. you could give, yeah, no, no sevens. sevens. Um, but we could, but we'd like go in like a Google doc or like a, a sheet and we'd like go and average the numbers and like, okay, this person got like a, an 8.2 and this person got like an eight. So is, was one person better than the other? And we don't <laughs> right. really, we don't really do that anymore. By point two, of, clearly yeah, he is better. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Um, but we've kind of transitioned to like more, I think, intuition based, um, and like you, th we think you're going to be good. We've done some qualifications on you. Let's do a trial period and but and see how this actually works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's I think yeah. worked out better for us. But I'd be interested to hear, Brad, like what what your thoughts on there because you had this as a point you wanted to chat about i don't know what you guys do over there yeah man i i feel like our hiring process has gone from you know uh so the approach was just throw them in the deep end and sink or swim <laughs> we would literally just take several candidates that we barely even vetted and just throw them at the project mm. and just like add them to github and everything and just say <laughs> here you go pick up some issues, start contributing to this project, right? Like kind of like almost like an open source kind of mentality, right? Yeah. Um, and the problem with that is it's super disruptive to our team, right? Because <laughs> you've got all these other people in there just fiddling around and trying to learn on the fly and and are and they're asking questions and they're uh, it's just, it was a it was a mess. So we do a lot more vetting now before we get to the stage where we bring them on into a trial. Um, but, uh, our trial now is, is still based on our product. So it's like a fork. We just make a copy of, of our product repo mm. and we just copy some issues into there that we feel like this person, uh, or that the role, uh, w would be revealing for the role and, uh, like things we want to see. And, and then they just do that. They, they open a pull request for that stuff and commit some code and, and we review it and we give them feedback and they fix it and we just go through the process that we normally would. And that's been the best trial project. We've in the past also come up with like these conceived trial projects for people. And that's been a really false negative, like false positive uh, signal in the past because we, uh -huh. we could try this project and it was too simple for the person to get their head around. And then when they, so they, they did great on that project, but then they get into our actual plugin and they can't get their head around it. The concepts are eluding them. And so, yeah, we've, we've really kind of gone back to the old way of like, you know, throwing them in the deep end in a way, mm -hmm. um, but just in a way that's less disruptive to our team. Um, and, yeah, and that's been pretty good. One other problem we've had though, is that, so what part of our process is to review sample code upfront as part of kind of the application process. We ask in, your, okay. in the application, can you provide some sample code that we could quickly review to see if you're, you know, in the same uh, arena as what we're looking for here, right? And a lot of people, especially when we were hiring Laravel developers for spin up, a lot of people say they don't have any code to share. Everything's, you know, under NDA or whatever, right? Um, and I think that's just the difference between Laravel world and the mm -hmm. WordPress world, where WordPress world is GPL, everything, right? So it's, it's all, uh, it's kind of all open source if you're working on WordPress stuff. So you should be able to share pretty much anything you work on there, whereas Laravel is much more private and protected stuff. Um, 
So now with Laravel developers, we have to have this kind of uh, code challenge project that is contrived that allows them to do something that, that can show us like, you know, can you cut it? W will you be able to cut it when you get into our application, right? So we had to contrive something there just for those people. Um, but then we still bring them on to into our app and try them out sometimes, mm. right? If we're still not sure. So our process is really fluid and it really like, if we were not feeling sure about something, we'll figure out a way to like squash that uncertainty before we make a commitment, especially if someone is employed full time and has to leave their job to come and work for us, right? Like in those situations, you don't want to say, yes, you're hired and then find mm -hmm. out like two weeks in that they are not a fit and then they, they're let, you know, they're out at sea, <laughs> you, know, you just <laughs> let them go, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. tricky, man. It's so tricky. I, I, tricky is like the number one word I use for hiring stuff because it's, I, it's a, it's a huge challenge. I, it's like, no matter how good or bad I feel about someone, it's almost like I, it's like I, anything could happen. Right. Uh, oh, I, yeah. as someone yeah. who's hired a good amount of people successfully, but also had a lot of issues hiring in the past, over the past three years, like I've probably had, you know, we've had, I'll say we, I have personally had like three or four people who have hired who just didn't work out very well. And mm -hmm. usually I can look back in the moment. It's hard to say like, I need to let this person go. Like it can be difficult to say that, mm -hmm. but then after Certainly. it's done, I can always look back even to like the application process, even to like their first week. Um, obviously there's more stuff mm -hmm. we could always do for onboarding and helping people get better at that. But there's usually something I can look back at to say, Hmm, that was maybe a red flag for something that could have turned into something mm -hmm. bigger. Brad, I don't want to call you out, you know, maybe you've had some hiring that's worked out. Maybe something hasn't worked out. Any around hiring that hasn't worked out where you've seen something like that, anything specifically you've seen that you look back and like, oh, that wasn't like, I should have, I should have listened to myself more and like notice that that might've been an issue. Yeah. I feel, I feel like I, in the past I've given up the, the hiring decision to my team without guidance. I mean, that was a huge mistake. That was probably the biggest mistake I've made hiring in the past where mm. I just, I said, you guys hire this person <laughs> and just like, you're on your own. You've never hired anybody before, but I'm sure it'll work out is basically the, mm. the, uh, the approach I took, which is terrible in retrospect, right? Everything, you know, everything that doesn't work out is always terrible in retrospect. But at the time it didn't seem like that big of a, an ask that they would just figure it out. But in, you know, in retrospect, hiring is super difficult. Of course, mm. I'm not very good at it still. And I've been doing it for years. Thing. I was like, I'm not very good at it. Someone else should probably help handle this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was probably the biggest thing. Um, and then, like I said earlier, like we, we contrived of a project that didn't actually test it, test their skills very well to test kind of all the important mm. parts. And so in retrospect, we look and we say, oh, yeah, that project was a bad, it was a bad project to, to actually use as vetting. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's too, I'm sure there's dozens of others. If I, I, I'd rather not sit down and make that list though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a hard, it's a stressful list to, to put together. And I feel it's, it's kind of like whack-a-mole too. Like, I, f I feel like there's going to be something new next year that we've never, that has never happened that lets someone in you know that someone gets in through the cracks and then we find out oh shoot yeah we we gotta, we gotta watch thing. out for that in the future yeah. yeah yeah how about well maybe we could talk about the other side of the coin like the positives you know people who have worked there for a long time uh anybody oh, yeah. or like yeah you know your best team members people who have been there and you can really lean on and trust and are really core members of the team maybe some positives from like some of their I don't know, because there's like kind of hard skills and soft skills. There's like obviously like technical chops that your developers need, but then there's mm -hmm. also like soft skills around communication. Like how do you use Slack? Like, okay, they can just do it. Anything specifically that comes out to you is like things that I usually think about it, like the people I manage directly, like if they can make my mm -hmm. life easier as a manager, like I don't have to sit over their shoulder, like they get their stuff done, oh, like they're yeah. good team members. Like to me, if they can do that, like 
they're like 80% of the way there, right? So anything from your perspective, though, where you're like, this is what tells me like this person is, you know, the bomb? Yeah. Well, I mean, our retention has been excellent. Um, we just had our first team member leave that's been with us for a long time, uh, which is, you know, sad. But, you know, he was moving on to new exciting things. And so we kind of celebrated it. But, there was, you know, there was a somber mood to it, too. Once you right? get to 10 plus uh, people, statistically speaking, at some point. No, yeah. So, so he had been... He had been with us since 2015, so five years. Uh, we still wow. have five people that have been with us for at least that long. Um, and we've got uh, probably, we got two more that have been with us, I think, for three or four years. Mm -hmm. And then the rest are newer. Uh, one's been with us for two, and the others are much newer. Um, so, um yeah, our retention rates are, are really good. Um, we had one person stay for two years and leave. Uh, our, our marketer, our marketing manager, uh, that happened. Um, but I think largely what happened there is that she hired someone uh, under her to help her with a bunch of tasks and kind of it kind of replaced a lot of the work <laughs> that she was doing mm. uh, like kind of filled her role a little bit too much if you know <laughs> what i mean so she kind of made herself obsolete no yeah way. she was stuck between manager and individual contributor she was just kind of like yeah yeah, yeah. so I, th I think that's a bit what happened there um mm. and i mean i mean the idea there was to grow like for her to become more of a high level person. Right. But it, it, she was having difficulty doing that, I think. Hmm. And, and so she ended up, end up leaving the company, um, which, which is fine. Uh, like we've been fine ever since. So it wasn't like, Oh, this is devastating. We're not going to be able to, to keep, keep going here. Um, that would be bad. Right. If you you lost that key person. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like honestly at, at this point, most people on our team, like if they quit or had to leave, things would be okay. But there are definitely like probably like two or three people who I would be stressed if they left because right, they're right, right. really core to the team, which is good, right? They're really core contributors. Oh, yeah. But like if they left, that would be a challenge for us, which is that's a challenge too. So you want to have people, it's like what line, where, where do you want people? Like you want people to be <laughs> dependent on, but not too dependent on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I feel the same way. Uh, we just, I just promoted, I mean, promoted is a weird word. Changed role is probably a better word. He went from being a developer primarily to being a manager. So mm. he's managing a development team. He's doing almost no coding. Actually, yeah, he's doing a little tiny bit of coding still uh, here and there uh, and doing some PR reviews. Uh, but other than that, he's just managing the projects and, and the products um, and eventually going to be doing some UX work and, and stuff like that, like product manager mm. stuff. Um, and then we have another person, again, uh, this person's been with us for over five years and he's kind of taken on a lead developer role within one of the teams. And so, yeah, like if one of these, the <laughs> whole reason for this was to take a bunch of stuff off my plate, right? They're kind of stepping into a new role and taking away a bunch of stuff that I've been doing, right? So yeah, if they were to leave, it would really, really suck because I would mm. have to inherit all those things again until I could find a replacement. And and the, one of the only reasons that I felt confident in giving oh, giving up these responsibilities to these people is because they've been with me so, for so long. They know everything so well, and I trust them, right? And so yeah, if they were to yeah. leave, it would be it would be really difficult. <laughs> so yeah, totally. Um, the one. Other thing I wanted to chat about here in this podcast, actually, it's like based on what we all started talking about, which was how you're seeing fewer leads come in for new hiring prospects, so like top of the funnel. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that because like as someone, I personally, I've, I've adjusted my hiring structure somewhat from 
just basing it on these websites where I post a job and I get candidates to actually doing more like quote unquote mm -hmm. re recruitment. That sounds like really formal, but it's, mm -hmm. it's more just like using my network to reach out to people. Um, like Ali Nimmons is on our team now. Like that started from a Twitter DM where I like right. DM'd her about like a project she was working. I think she was helping like her coworker, Michelle, like raise money for a laptop. And I like DM'd her. I was like, ah, oh, this is a really cool project. Like super cool. And that eventually turned into now she's like our community person and rocking it. Um, nice. And I just, I'd be interested to hear also from you, Christy, around like, I mean, Liquid Web is a thousand person company, right? So you probably have like an HR department that like does like outreach and like has a certain candidate quota every month. But Brad is a smaller company. Wondering if you do any um, like outreach for people like Slack DMs in like the making WordPress channel, like reaching out to some educators in the space who have a collection of like a hundred freelancers they work with. Hey, anybody, you know, who could do this? Um, yeah. And, and thinking about that is kind of like a, to support your mm -hmm. process of, of getting candidates in the top of the funnel. I'll butt in real quick. I want to hear Brad's answer, <laughs> um, but I will let you know um, that that, recruitment process never really goes away. Yes, Liquid Web has an entire HR department and they do all the HR things like wellness mm. programs and paperwork and onboarding and all the stuff that you associate um, with a larger company. But my job still came from a Twitter DM from Chris. So it never goes away, right? There there you, go. I don't think that that process ever becomes like hiring is completely disassociated and 100% outsourced to HR. Um, it's always going mm -hmm. to be about networks. And that's true for people looking for jobs too, right? Uh, you have a better chance when you know someone who works at the company, even if it's not someone who works in hiring. Why? Because they can talk to hiring manager, because they can make your name relevant in a stack of resumes, blah, 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 all the regular sort of like employment advice, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, uh, that's a bit about Liquid Web. Um, I can definitely talk to how things were at Caldera. I mean, a lot of the things that you all are talking about um, are different for me. Um, and that was because um, we did bring on entry level people. Um, and that was because it wasn't difficult for me to teach. Um, right. And that just sort of comes with, again, it's a skill and people are different levels of knowledgeable and also interested in it, right? Um, because it does take a lot of patience and it does take a lot of effort and investment, right? Um, but for me, I mean, a, a ton of my job responsibilities now is to teach the product catalog to sales, to uh, the partner team to mm. new support people to things like that. Right. So this is just sort of like, I hate these words too, but like kind of like a natural competency. Right. Um, and so when you're looking at entry level roles, that funnel is just going to be bigger. It's just going to be bigger. And um, that sometimes helps if you have the structures or the time to put into bringing someone on and then documenting all that stuff and then reusing all that stuff for the next person, which is more of what I have been doing um, mm. here at, um, at Liquid Web. Um, but, you know, outside of taking on that strategy, it's hard to get qualified people. When we were looking for roles that were intermediate to senior, it was really hard to find people. A lot of recruitment was required. A lot of people didn't make it through, even if they weren't entry level, just because there were key pieces of information that we just couldn't teach. And um, I don't have a great answer, but I do wanna add that at no point does active recruitment go away. <laughs> Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, so my second hire, uh, Ian Polson, who's still on the team, and he's actually the product manager I was talking about earlier. Um, uh, he was hired because he replied to a tweet. Uh, he, I had, I had posted that I was hiring, and 
So we already had a relationship because he had bought WP App Store from me and he still runs WP App Store today, which is mm. and now it's just a deal site, right? And that's what it was when when he bought it from me. It was like a it's kind of like uh App Sumo, but for WordPress products, right? Mm -hmm. Um and he still runs that today. And uh anyway, yeah, they, he he reached out to me on Twitter and he said, Hey, I might be interested in this. Like, you know, it was kind of a I think it was around the post that I'd written where it's like, uh, come work for me and I'll teach you how to launch your own product or something like that. It was kind of like a, an apprenticeship kind of thing, except paid, you know, you, you actually get paid um, for your time. So uh, he reached out to me for that. And then I think I, I reached out to Matt Shaw, who's also with us still. And, uh, he, and, uh, had a conversation with him and then it turned into an acquisition. So he had his own product, better search replace. And, uh, and yeah, and we, it was basically turned into an aqua hire. And so Matt came to work for us, our, that product rolled into our catalog and, and the rest is history. Um, so I agree. Um, and I have been talking to people who, uh, who know us from our content and our products. You know, are some of the best candidates that we get applying by far actually <laughs> are people who know us already, mm -hmm. right? Know our products and want to work for us and are very enthusiastic about it. And they, they demonstrate that in their application, right? Um, so that's been, so yeah, I would say like, like active recruitment has never been a thing for us. And we've only really been considering mm -hmm. it lately because it's been so difficult to hire uh, lately, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, those are, it's, those are all interesting, uh, like anecdotal stories, like very interesting how you've all had like Twitter <laughs> experience of, you know, a hiring process. Um, our, I'll, I, mm -hmm. I would use, I'd second what you said about people who know your product or good potential hires. I know I've talked to like the team at, at Beaver Builder and Anthony is like their, mm -hmm. their marketer over there. He was just a Beaver Builder power user. Uh, and they hired him because he just like knew Beaver Builder so well and had marketing chops like boom, easy hire, right? And then um, mm -hmm. like for us, I hired Alec, who's our head of growth and he was a WP Buffs white label partner before we hired him. Mm -hmm. And so he right. knew the white label process. He he was a, a white label partner. He was using it to grow his business. So he knew the benefits of it. He knew you know the ins and outs of it. And obviously he had to learn from our side, mm -hmm. but you know, he talked about Christy listening to us on podcast episodes when during when he was applying and like, you know, mm. it's a small thing, but it's an impactful thing. Like you know about the company, you know, you know about us, and that was, and he's been fantastic so far. So I think these little like yeah. gold nuggets are are important. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, speaking of uh, H HR, hmm. oh sorry. Oh no no no, it's okay. I was just chiming in that what Joe just described with Alec happens a good amount at Liquid Web too, especially when it comes uh, to sales roles. Host a lot of Liquid Web. Mm -hmm. mm, totally. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Huh. Uh, speaking of HR, though, we are now like after this year of basically, I spent so much time hiring this year. <clears throat> I'm starting to consider a part-time HR person to really do some of the heavy lifting around hiring because I feel like we've probably hit the point now where we are just going to be hiring kind of perpetually. It's going to be, and, and if I don't have help with that, then I'm just going to be the one doing it perpetually. Um, so like a recruiter or someone to like filter applications and maybe do initial contact with applicants. Like I've been doing all of that myself this year mm. and I really need to, to give that up. Um, I don't think I'm, I need to get over the idea that I'm some kind of special evaluator of these applications. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I am. I, I, I know I am not, but yet when I'm doing it, I'm feeling like, Ooh, I'm so good at this, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. <laughs> Brad, after we wrap up here, we'll do some tradesies because we just hired a people ops manager, part-time people ops manager. Oh, okay. And she's been like, it's changed a lot of what we do and made things a lot easier for Nick and I in terms of Ooh, hiring process. So lovely. I will, um, help to push to 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 help you find someone right. 
if you could connect nice. me, this is a nice trade here, right? For HR stuff. You, okay. I would love to talk oh, it's to- it's a quid pro quo. It's a quid pro this. quo. Here we go. I would love to talk to your <laughs> designer because we. I would be interested in not not hiring that person, but I would love to maybe cook, cook into their network and to find help mm -hmm. them help me find a designer because I see all the stuff you guys put out at Delicious Brains and everything is like- Mm, beautiful, impeccably yeah. designed, and you can tell that you have an in-house designer and not just like a like design firm helping you yeah. out. Like I can, I can tell it's like it all works together really well. So yes, quid pro quo. Sorry, but like I, I, wanna, I want to, I want the designer <laughs> I don't know. too. Okay, um, I don't know how much. I don't know how much Lewis is going to be able to help you. I mean, I mean, first of all, Lewis is an incredible designer, and I'm so fortunate to have him on the team. Uh, and it was it was a pretty difficult hiring process to to find him, though it was only one round. I feel like how good Lewis is, it, it should have taken like three rounds to find someone mm -hmm. like him, right? Um, so uh, I don't know how I he was working at an agency. He saw our job post and he applied. It was really that simple. Yeah. I don't know how much he's going to be able to help you there. It's <laughs> probably going to be luck, Joe. I'm afraid to say. That yeah, <laughs> turns out usually that's the case. And so, yeah, I'm I'm with you there. But cool. Well, let's uh, yeah. wrap it up. We've been doing like 50 minutes or so. So um, yeah, appreciate you being on, Brad. Why don't you tell folks? website, Twitter, handle, places sure. they can find you online. Yeah, at Brad T on Twitter. And uh, you can find our products at deliciousbrains.com and spinupwp.com. Yes, cool. And uh, last thing, Brad, we ask guests to do on the show is ask our listeners for a little iTunes review. So if you wouldn't mind asking our listeners right now for a little five stars there, we'd appreciate it. <sighs> All right, folks, it's time to do a little work. <laughs> Not really, though, is it? It takes like less than five minutes to do this, right? You go to iTunes and actually, do you have to go into the iTunes app to do this? Or can you go to the website or like, where do you go? You can go to the website. My computer has a little pop-up window. When I go to the website, it says, do you want to op open this in iTunes? So then I in just iTunes. open it in iTunes. Right. But you, we also have a redirect. Mm -hmm. So you, people can just go to WPMRR.com forward slash iTunes and it will just, Ooh. whatever your device is, does with that, it'll take you right Look to the that. review area. Yep. Super easy. So WPMRR.com slash iTunes. That's easy. Just do that. And then like two minutes later, you're done and you've done a really nice thing for Joe and Christy. I mean, <laughs> that should make you feel good, right? <laughs> oh, there you go. The, uh, so as always, we appreciate those. Leave a little comment with something you learned from this episode and then we can shoot the screenshot to Brad and say, oh, thanks, Brad. We appreciate you getting helping us get a review. And it will also help us. Ooh choose what other episodes to do if we get a bunch of reviews about a hiring episode hey we'll talk more about it in the future and bring other folks on to talk about it too so cool uh if folks are new listeners we got a few old older episodes right christy we have hundreds of older episodes is it hundreds i think it's a hundred and then some tens Hun hundred with like maybe yeah like a, a a super small s or something like 120 <laughs> so maybe not multiple hundreds, hundreds. but 100 plus 100 plus tens yeah there, there you we go, go of episodes uh in the bank so go and check out some older content uh specific to your challenge we have a search on the website so hey you're having trouble with pricing search pricing we've got a bunch of episodes on that kind of stuff and everything else under the sun uh if you have questions for us at the show uh chrissy and i always want to do more q a episodes so shoot your questions into where chrissy into yo at wpmrr.com I just had that inbox redirected to my team to help me handle that because I'm not very good at checking email. So they'll be checked even better now, that inbox. So that's another reason to send those in. Or you can just hit us up on Twitter uh, at Joseph H. Howard. Christy, what are you? Yeah, X-T-X-T-I-E, Chirinos, that's C-H-I-R-I-N-O-S. Yeah, I got an email from yo at WPMR.com. Ali forwarded it to me. It was very exciting. Uh -huh. There you go. Perfect. Makes it easy. Um, all right. That's it for this week. We'll be in your podcast players again next Tuesday. Brad, thanks again for being on, man. It's been real. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. See you, everybody. Bye.